What's up guys, welcome to my crib. So today I'm gonna to be telling you exactly how I freaking got this house at 24. I'm just gonna to cut to the chase and tell you all the truth guys. Uh, my parents bought it for me and I'm a spoiled brat and that's exactly how I got it. Thank you guys, <laughs> I got you, I'm just messing with you guys. So anyway, today I wanna to go ahead and break down everything that I did and everything that I should have done because this is very important, especially if you're 24 and you're trying to do it for like your real estate portfolio the way I am. Uh, for example, if you're watching this video and you just wanna live there like forever, like I know people who do that, it's totally fine. Me personally, I'm just trying to build a portfolio, baby. Before we continue, I do have to preface something and it's just a sad reality. Honestly, if I wouldn't have been so stupid with money, I would have gotten a house sooner uh, but the thing is that I just like made so many freaking mistakes and I don't know it just pisses me off just thinking about it because now that I'm old because okay here's one here's one thing that I do have to say I was always good at saving money but then sometimes I just get like wild and crazy and I could be saving like for example like ten thousand dollars and then I'll spend it all. I don't want to get into it. I have made videos about that, but man, I just honestly piss myself off sometimes. <laughs> okay, so let's be honest with each other. Buying a house at 24 is actually something that I like anybody could be proud of, right? But the thing that really hurts is that like I was telling y'all earlier, I just made so many mistakes with my money and I could have had a house sooner. But before I even get into how I bought this house, I definitely want to talk about how I freaking screwed up. So the first thing that I did, I didn't save my money properly. So for example, like I was telling y'all earlier, I would save my money. I would actually have money in the bank and I would be like super proud of myself like I've done it like maybe twice in my life that I would like reach ten thousand dollars the first time um, instead of doing the payment plan I just bought my braces right out and then after that inflation started happening and everything and like my bills went up I don't know if y'all remember that during COVID everything just started going crazy and the prices just started going up and literally I just couldn't save to that point anymore and does it hurt my heart knowing that I literally spent my money so stupidly so many times yes it does because a lot of the times I think about it even right now I'm thinking about it and it feels like someone's just putting a freaking dagger in my knife It just feels like someone's putting a dagger in my freaking heart and it just pisses me off because literally bro I just spend money so stupidly like I remember whenever I was younger what I would do I would go to Chipotle and meal prep right and I would buy five meals from there and then have it for like a day and a half and then I would go the next day and do it again and do it again and do it again. Bro, I was literally spending like $300 a week on food. For what? Like honestly, it was just the stupidest thing ever. And then not to mention that like I would work out a lot. So I would buy supplements and I would spend maybe like $500 on supplements a month. And honestly, just thinking about it just like makes me so mad, bro, because all that money right there that I was spending, I swear I'm about to start crying because now that I think about it, I could have been a millionaire at 24, man. But instead, I'm making this YouTube video. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so I just got back from work and honestly, I'm freaking cold. So I got in my little bathrobe. But anyway, the second point is that I ran out my debt and my credit cards. So pretty much with my credit cards, what I was doing is that every time that there was like a purchase that I had to do, like for example, school books and everything like that, instead of just using the money that I had saved, I was like literally thinking like, okay, I have $1,200 in my books or $1,200, might as well just use my credit card and I'll pay it off by the end of the month, right? But then after that, I would swipe and use it for food and then I would use it for like different things that were miscellaneous, like gas. Other than just being in debt because of my credit cards, I also got myself in debt because of my freaking truck. So whenever I was 19, I bought a truck for no reason. Like I literally had a car already paid off and everything, no problems with it. And bro, I bought a truck and guess what? I literally had to spend all this money. So pretty much every month I had to pay like $700 for insurance, the car and gas. And bro, that freaking screwed me up, honestly. And I regret that. Even though I went through this, I never learned. I literally just started becoming better with money this year. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. So to summarize, I think we both know what my problem is. I would literally save and then I would just like pretend like I freaking am rich and then I will just spend all the money I saved. I don't know why I have that issue and why it's engraved into my freaking head. I think I'm just like toxic with money. But Another thing that I did realize that I'd recommend you not do with your money is definitely don't reward yourself because I feel like that's something that it gets engraved into my head and guess what I start doing. I'm like, okay, let me spend $500 on this because I deserve it. And then later I'll be like, you know what? Technically, I deserve that too, so let me go ahead and buy it. So bro, at this point, I don't even buy anything. I'm just a freaking cheapskate. Honestly, I think it's just maturity, man. I'm finally getting a hold of it and I'm 24, bro. Maybe maybe I didn't deserve to buy a house back then. Like, I'm, it's starting to all make sense. Now I see why the man above didn't let me buy a house back in the day. So now we can get to the point of this video, which is how I freaking bought a house at 24. 
So believe it or not, the first point is to just save your money like crazy. So it doesn't matter how you do it. Saving is a double-edged sword, right? So once you start figuring out how you're gonna save, you also have to figure out budgets, your cost of living. The game changer for me was literally having a budget because once I changed that, that's when my savings account started going up and that's what's really important. So in order to find out your budget, you have to figure out your cost of living and you need to figure out what you're doing and what you can eliminate. So one thing that I did for sure whenever I was trying to figure out my cost of living is like, what exactly do I have to do? So instead of getting like $40 haircuts, I started getting $20 haircuts. Instead of going to the gym and getting a $19 membership, I would get the $9.99 membership because I didn't need the $19.99. And between me and you, don't think that the groceries are so expensive nowadays because that's how I used to think. Just freaking buy cheaper stuff. Like for example, whenever I go to Sam's Club, I buy a rotisserie chicken and instead of cooking, I just get the rotisserie chicken and I just tear it apart. And bro, it's $5 and it lasts like three days. And you can make sandwiches, you can make chicken and rice, you can make pasta bowls, you can make salads. So I feel like in this video, I've literally talked about saving your money so much, but let's go ahead and get away from that. So a realistic thing that you really need is to find a trustworthy realtor. So the thing with me is that I'm fortunate enough to have a cousin that's a realtor and I didn't even like talk to her that much. So once we made my first transaction, then we started getting like a little bit closer. So one thing that really set her apart was whenever I was buying this house that we're currently in. So whenever I was buying this house, the like owner was like very stern on the $80,000 price. But what she did was crazy because she actually brought it down $1,500. The way she did it was after the inspection, she literally got pissed and she was like, oh, you really want my client to be paying 80,000 whenever you have like $3,000 in repair. How about you do this? How about you give him some credit and fix the things that he has to do and it's gonna be under your watch, under your wallet. So that's under your responsibility and we'll figure out who we're gonna put that we trust. It's funny because at that point, I was just gonna let bygones be bygones and she literally just was like, no primo, I got this. I was like, damn girl, okay, do your thing, do your thing. That's definitely something I would recommend. Find a good realtor. So the next point is very important even if you're gonna be renting it out or even if you're gonna be living there. So the reason why it's important is because you need to find a spot that you feel comfortable living in because you gotta remember this place that you're getting is literally a product so you need to be able to see yourself living in there and then you can sell it so i'm not even kidding this house where i'm at is literally a mile away from my mom and it is so cool because like her neighborhood is like pretty good and honestly this neighborhood is very nice but i was still skeptical right i'm moving away and i was just like bro like i was nervous i was like what if i get like my truck gets robbed or something so far everything's been good and also outside of you being safe you need to make sure that your tenants are going to be safe because like that um if it's an area that people don't even want to live in guess what they're probably not even gonna hit you up about it it's gonna be harder to rent so that's just my perspective I've never rented a house out, but I feel like that's definitely something that I'd recommend you do. Make sure that the area is safe and it'll sell itself. The last point that I have to tell you is that this process is so long. If you're thinking that buying a home is equivalent to buying a truck or a car, like whenever you go to the dealership and you just have to be there like three to four hours negotiating and then you drive off the lot with your freaking car, that is not the case here. This is literally gonna take like maybe a month to month and a half and then you get the keys and that's how it happened. Believe me. This house took two months to get and it was just something that like, it definitely tested my patience. I was so frustrated. Like I made a video about it and I remember I was just like pissed off because I was like, bro, when am I gonna get this house? When is this gonna happen? I feel like this was definitely a lesson and I feel like it was something that I needed because dude, I'm the most impatient person ever and it, that is important in real estate, right? Sometimes you might sit on a property that might not rent or the property might not sell and that's the thing that you have to realize because with real estate, it's all about the long game and just being patient and that's something that I didn't realize but now there's like scenarios that I am in my life where I'm like, bro, just be patient. You've been in worse scenarios and I think that you'll be okay. So now, um, that's something that I definitely have to give you like a big, big warning and disclaimer on because if you're trying to buy a house and thinking like, oh bro, it's gonna happen like overnight, hell no. And then also be mindful of all the costs because it's not only just down payment and that's it. You also have to turn in an earnest fee and then you have to like pay for the inspection and then you have closing costs. So in reality, something that was only gonna be like 15,000 down, bro, it's gonna be like an additional 6,000 in there and just be mindful of that. Because some people, whenever they're buying a house, they don't realize this. And yes, I'm talking about myself. I didn't realize this. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to go ahead and help you out a little bit because that's definitely something that I wish I heard and kind of like learning the fundamentals of how to invest into real estate. Because whenever I was doing this, I was literally just doing this blindly and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just had my loved ones telling me every day that everything was going to be okay because 
Bro, I'm telling y'all, y'all think I'm kidding, but I'm impatient. But anyway, I don't care if y'all believe if I'm impatient or not. Please just like and subscribe, guys. <laughs>